Well, I'm going to start us out uh, in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. It says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I started thinking about that statement. The, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And I started thinking about the sea. How does it cover the earth? Well, somewhere around three-quarter of the earth is covered with water. So predominantly, the earth is covered with water, isn't it? But not only that, at the ocean's deepest depth in the Mariana tr Trench, if you were to turn Mount Everest upside down and, and the bottom of it was at the surface of the ocean and you went down the depth of Mount Everest, you would still have over 6,700 feet of ocean below the top of that. So not only is that ocean giant, that ocean is deep. And if God says the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, then the church should be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, shouldn't it? Should be filled with it. Hallelujah. Now, I love it when the glory shows up, but greater than that is the knowledge of the glory where you can produce the glory of God. God doesn't want you just to occasionally experience the glory and say, praise God, wasn't that great? No, he wants each one of us to know that the glory's in us and how to manifest the glory. Amen. So we're going to talk about the glory, aren't we? So that means to me, when I think of that, God is releasing some serious revelation, revelation about the glory of God in these days, and we need to increase our spiritual IQ on the glory, yes. don't we? Yes. He says we need to know this. We need to know this and that we would know it. So yes. praise the Lord. That's why I'm here tonight with this message to help educate you about the glory of God so you can get the benefit. Now, a lot of times people think about this. Well, why don't you just preach on something practical, Pastor? I mean, come on, I've got bills to pay. I need to walk in divine health. I need to get along with my spouse. I've got kids to raise. Preach something practical. I'm telling you what, if you walk in the glory of God, it'll fix all those issues. Every single one of them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So let's define the glory of God to start with tonight. Let's define the glory. The, the word glory, there's different Hebrew and Greek words, and I'm not going to go through each Hebrew and Greek, but I'll give you the English transliteration of them. The word glory means weight. Weight. It means splendor. Honor. Brightness. Majesty. Dignity. Abundance, wealth, and treasure. Webster defines the glory as the presence of the divine being, the manifestations of the divine nature, and favor to the blessed in heaven. Now, he, he relegated the glory to heaven, but we've already been raised up together and seated together so we're already in heaven. Y'all aware of that, right? We're not waiting to get to heaven. Heaven has come to earth, and heaven lives in you and me. Amen. Amen. And uh, one well-known minister said the glory is heavy with everything good. Heavy with everything good. Um, in the glory, the atmosphere is pregnant with all the blessings of the kingdom. Think of that. In the glory, the atmosphere is pregnant with every blessing of the kingdom. So that if you come into a place where the glory of God is, right there you have come into a place with complete divine supply, no matter what your need might be. It doesn't matter what the need is. It doesn't matter what battle you're facing. It doesn't matter what the doctor's diagnosis is. Amen. You are coming to the presence of God and every single need that you might have can be met there in the glory of God. Amen. Amen. You know, some people wonder why in some church services that people fall. 
Well, the glory of God is heavy. And when the weight of the glory gets heavy enough, you can't stand underneath it. Amen? I remember uh, <laughs> experiencing this different times in my life where the power of God would hit me and, uh, and then all of a sudden you're on the ground. You're like, whoa, what happened? And then I've had it hit me before where I'm on the ground and then I can't get up. I've fallen and I can't get up. And then I realize I don't really want to get up. This is glory. I'm in the glory of God. Why be in a rush to get up? I'm on God's operating table. Amen. And you're there on the ground and it's like you're stuck to the ground. Only there's nothing holding you down physically, but you still can't get up. And it's good to spend, you know, if that happens, that's, that's okay. Amen. That's God's operating table. He can do all kinds of things during those times. But some people wonder why it is that sometimes people fall under the power. Well, when God's super comes on your natural, something's got to give, and it's not going to be his super, is it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. His super is greater than the natural, isn't it? The glory is the rarefied atmosphere of heaven touching earth. You know, Jesus taught us to pray. In Matthew 6.10, he said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And so whenever you study, if you really want to know what the will of God is for your life, you've really got only four chapters in the Bible that are really the absolute total will of God. Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, Revelation 21, and Revelation 22. In between are 1,187 chapters where the world, unbelieving people, right? Devils, demons have caused all kinds of havoc. So if you really want to see what God's purpose and plan is in its fullness, it's in those four chapters. Amen. But Jesus has come that we could experience that life in the middle of of a, a fallen world amen. in the middle of even fallen people amen right. i want everybody to get saved but uh, you know i'm not under the the notion that everybody is going to get saved and so because of that you're going to have to deal with some people who don't know jesus have you does, do any of you have to deal with those people from time to time maybe on a daily basis you have to deal with them right <laughs> amen and so you know, when we get to heaven, we won't have to deal with that. But he's given us a covenant that we could live and manifest and bring heaven to earth through us. Right? And that's why Jesus told us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done as it is in earth or um, in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Now, it says in earth. That's interesting because we're made of the dust of the earth. We're made of the dust of the earth. It didn't say on earth. He said in earth. And all of you, your body is made of dust, isn't it? I mean, right? Adam was formed of the dust of the ground. And then God breathed. What did God breathe into Adam? The glory. The Bible says the breath. It was the glory of God that God breathed into Adam's nostril. And Adam became a living soul, didn't he? Because he encountered God's glory. So God's glory brings life. It brings life to us. Amen? Praise God. The glory, when the glory shows up, spontaneous miracles and healings are commonplace. Right. Spontaneous. Spontaneous. I'll, I'll go into that deeper in just a second. The glory is greater than the anointing. See, I think we need to understand there's a difference between the glory of God and the anointing. Did you know that? There's a difference in the glory and the anointing. Let me give you a little bit on the anointing, then I'll talk about the glory. The anointing is the power of God on an individual to execute the dominion of the kingdom on the works of the devil and to preach and teach the gospel. That's the anointing. It comes on a person. The anointing operates through an individual and therefore that individual is glorified. Being under the anointing for an extended period of time will leave a minister or an individual exhausted. You can only yield to the, the anointing so long and then your flesh gets weary and, and you're done. Amen. What about the glory? What's the difference? In the glory, God himself, it's God himself showing up in a place in such a way that without anybody having hands laid on them, healings take place. 
Deliverances take place. Devils come out of people. Bondages are broken. The glory operates independent of an individual. Therefore, God gets all the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Being in the glory will cause a minister or an individual's strength to be renewed. Because now it's outside an individual working through an individual and it's just God has come in the atmosphere so strong, amen, that the glory is filling the room and, you know, nobody even having hands laid on them and miracles start happening. Healings start happening, amen. amen. Devils come out of people. Bondages get broken, amen. It's a good thing. <laughs> miracles are a manifestation of the glory of God. Remember when Jesus turned the water into wine? The, comment, the last verse on that in John 2.11 says, This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Notice it says he manifested forth his glory. What was the manifestation of the glory? It was the water being turned into wine. What glorif Do miracles glorify man or God? They glorify God. Miracles glorify God. I think about uh, when Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death, but unto the glory of God. Well, the sick, the, God was not glorified while that individual was sick. Did you know that? Right. He wasn't glorified a bit. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the time where Jesus spat on the ground and made clay and put the clay in the dude's eyes where there weren't eyes, eye sockets probably, and said, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which he was a blind guy, and that was over a mile away. And there was a lot of water closer. But Jesus was going to see if he would walk in faith to the command of Jesus. You see how honor brings, the, honor brings miracles? He could have said, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. There's water just right over here. The guy wouldn't have got healed. I mean, he's blind guy, he's got mud on his eyes. Can you tell me, can you tell me where the pool of Siloam is? And they're saying, uh, 500 steps that way and make a left. Or 500 steps that way, you run into the wall, you turn left, you run into the other wall, you turn right, and there it is, right? However he got there, he had to contend for his miracle. You know, if you're blind and you walk a mile, it's probably going to take around 15 or 20 minutes. You can't walk real fast because you don't want to slam into the wall, right? And so he had to contend for the miracle, which means he had to honor the words of Jesus. If he would have just said, that preacher doesn't know what he's talking about, you know, I'll just go wash over here, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have read about the miracle, would we? I mean, that probably wouldn't have made the scripture. There would have been another miracle that would have been there in the place. Amen. But the guy honored the words of Jesus, and because of that, he got his miracle. The water into wine was a manifestation of miracles. Lazarus, raised from the dead, was a manifestation of the glory of God. And we get a key to the glory here. I'm, obviously, I'm not going to read all of John chapter 11, but I'm just going to read one verse. It's John 11:40. Jesus said unto her, because Jesus said, walked up to the grave, and he said, roll away the stone. And, and uh, Mary's like, or Martha, whichever it was, said, you know, He's, it's, he's been dead four days, and he's going to stink, and he's decomposing. I mean, this, God, you can't help this. I mean, if, he, if you would have made it here before he died, you could have healed him, but you didn't. Or if he had just died, you could still fix that. But he's not just dead. He's been dead four days, and now he stinks. You can't fix this, God. Jesus says, roll away the stone. You may have a situation in your life, and you're thinking, Man, this situation, it's, it's past, it's gone, it's dead. Not only is it dead, it's four days dead. It's decomposed and it stinks. It is past help. Amen. You could be in that situation and, and God's like, no problem. Roll away the stone. Amen. Amen. Somebody needs to grab that. Jesus said in verse 40, his reply, John eleven forty. 40, Jesus said to her, Said I not unto you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. How can we see the glory of God? Somebody help me. Believe. Believe. If you believe, you will receive. 
If you doubt, you'll do without. Is it that simple? It's really just that simple, isn't it? Jesus said, believing, you will receive. Glory to God. You'll see the glory of God. If you want to see the glory of God in your finances, if you want to see the glory of God in your physical body, whatever it is, how do you get it, church? You believe what God said. You believe what God said over what a doctor says, over what uh, a financial advisor says, over what your bank statement says, over whatever it is. You believe God. You believe God. Amen. Praise God. So believing God will cause us to see God's glory manifested. And I love seeing God's glory manifested because when that happens, God gets glorified. Jesus gets glorified. No miracles, Jesus doesn't get glorified. Miracles, Jesus gets glorified, right? Miracles bring glory to Jesus. How many of you want to glorify him? Amen. Then, then we need to get proficient in activating and walking in the glory of God and walking in miracles, don't we? Amen? Here's what I love. Not only will this help you in, the physical, in your physical body and in ministering healing to people, but in Philippians 4.19, the Bible says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. All. How much is all? It's all, isn't it? It's all your need. He will supply all your need, but it's according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so, listen, regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of what's going on with the U.S. dollar, what, regardless of what's going on in the stock market, do you know the currency of heaven has never been devalued? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> It's never been devalued, never will. There's never been a down day in God's stock market. In His kingdom. There is no lack. There's no lack. There's never been a day of lack in God's kingdom. Nobody has ever prayed a prayer that caused the lights to blink in heaven. <laughs> Amen. Amen? Because there's too much of everything. And so look, don't put your trust, don't put uh, your trust in the world system. The Bible talks about the, uh, the sons of this world are wiser in their generation than the sons of light are in their generation. What does that mean? It means the world has become skilled in its far inferior system, which has tempted the believer to trust in that system which has caused the believer to be married to that system, the spirit of mammon, and that fallen Babylonian system. Amen? God doesn't want that for you and me. He wants you to get wise in the kingdom of God because that kingdom has never had a down day, never had a recession, never going to have a recession. And Daniel challenged the kingdom of the world in his day. He said, you guys eat your stuff. I'm going to eat my vegetables for the next 10 days and let's find out whose system works better. Yeah. And after that happened, what happened? He was found to be, what, 10 times smarter? than, yeah. than the, I mean, he, he changed their universities. Right. That was the world's university. He said, okay, you do, your, you do it your way. I'm going to do it God's way and let's see whose system is better. We need some believers who know the principles of the kingdom of God to wake up and challenge the world and say, you, you do your system and now watch what the kingdom will produce. But we've got to be wise in the things of the kingdom, which means we need to have a single focus on living out of this covenant that we have with the Most High God and the blessings of this kingdom, right? Right? You won't lack and you won't come behind if you do that. You will be blessed if you do that. Amen. Amen. And so how are these riches? Because it says, but my God shall supply all, 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 a double L. We don't have a problem with the A or the double L, do we? What does all mean? One guy did an etymological study on the word all. And he looked up the Hebrew and the Greek and the Aramaic, he looked up uh, 
the historical use in, in, the, in, in Greek when you know, that language was written in that day and that age. And what did he find out, church? All, all means all. Amen. My God shall supply all your need. But how? It's very important you understand how. He didn't say he would do it according to your job, did he? See, some people claim that promise, but they don't look at the, the whole detail of the verse. It says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches. His riches. What's that mean? Unlimited. Unlimited. Where are the riches? In the glory. In the glory by Christ Jesus. Well, how does that work? How do I get that glory to produce the money I need? When well, Haggai 2, it talks about when the glory comes, the wealth comes with it. Read it later on in Haggai chapter 2. But it talks about when the glory comes, God says the silver is mine and the gold is mine. And if he said in uh, Proverbs chapter 8, riches and honor are with me. If I'm in the glory, I'm with God. And I'm, if I'm with God, I've automatically got everything I have need of because with God is an abundance of everything that is needed for us to have not only enough for us, but to be a mega blessing. Because I don't want to just get my needs met. I want to be a blessing, don't you? I want to be a, a mega blessing to a whole lot of people. And he says, by Christ Jesus, you're going to access this wealth. Well, in 2 Peter 1, 3, it says this, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him. So how are we going to access these blessings? It's through the knowledge of him, isn't it? Through the knowledge of him. The, and the Amplified says the full, precise, correct Amen? The full, precise, and the personal, and the correct. The personal, what does that mean, church? If it's the personal knowledge, it means it's, you've got intimate, personal knowledge. Just like a husband and wife know things about each other that other people don't know because it's personal. It's a personal relationship. Amen? That's the kind of relationship we have with the Lord. It's not just that we know about Him, but we've got to know Him. Know him intimately. Amen? Amen. And uh, the Bible says, the mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Amen. Amen. Now think about this. This is a picture of the manifested presence of God. The Bible says the biggest thing we know of. What's the biggest thing that we know of on the, on the earth? It's mountains. Besides the ocean, mountains are giant. I mean, if you go and you stand at the foot of a high mountain, it's, it is awe-inspiring, isn't it? If you've gone to Colorado or gone somewhere else and you've stood at the base of a high mountain, or if you've got on top of a mountain and you've looked out from the top of a high peak. I remember in 2008, I got to uh, go on a little trip and I got to ride my motorcycle through the mountains. And one of the mountains we went up on top of was about 14,000 feet tall. And I'll tell you, up there, you could see, it looked like you could see forever up on top of that mountain. And so mountains are very imposing. And if, you're to, if you were to stand at the foot of a mountain and think about something that could affect a, a mountain, it would have to be extremely powerful, wouldn't it? I mean, you could set a thermonuclear bomb off Right, you know, put it right against the mountain and set it off, and it would not take the mountain out. It'd make a crater, a little crater, but it would not take the mountain out, a big mountain, would it? I mean, it would take a whole lot to move a mountain. But God says it's not like that with Him. It's not like that with His glory. He says the mountains melt like wax. Wax is one of the easiest things to melt, isn't it? I mean, you think of wax, you don't think of something that's real solid and substantial. You think of something that just a little bit of heat and it's like putty and it's melting and it's becoming a liquid, right? God says that big, huge mountain that to you and I is like impossible and we could never move it in his presence, it's going to melt Amen. 
like wax, like absolutely nothing. Why is that? Because in God's glory is God's omnipotence. His omnipotence. What does omnipotent mean? It means all powerful. Our God is all powerful. What does that mean, church? It means there is nothing that can resist him. There's nothing that can slow him down. There's nothing that can hinder him. Right? I mean, you couldn't... <laughs> can you imagine if, if you put however many locks on your front door and thought, I'm going to keep God out? <laughs> I mean, that, that would be ignorance gone to seed, wouldn't it? Well, I, I bought an extra thick deadbolt. It's going to, you know, it's going to stop God from getting in. No, it's not going to work, is it? I mean, he'll walk right through it if he wants. Or he could just obliterate it. He could do it a hundred different ways. He's God, right? But the bottom line is, that little lock on that door is not going to keep God out, is it? No, it's not. And he says, the biggest thing you might face in your life, which is likened to a mountain, because remember Jesus said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith, right? He said, it's a mountain. He said, in the, in the glory, those mountains just melt. Amen? So there's, there's several ways to get rid of the mountain. One of the ways you get rid of the mountain is you speak to the mountain. Another way you can get rid of mountains is the glory of God sh shows up and those mountains just melt. <laughs> they just melt right in front of you. Glory to God. Amen? Glory to God. Now in Psalm 73, 24, it says, You shall guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory. You shall guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Amen. So what does that mean? It means there is a natural world that we live in right here and now, isn't it? It's the physical world. It's the physical realm, right? Where we're looking at matter, where we're looking at all the natural things. We're looking at things that are governed, that appear to be governed by logic and by scientific law and by economics and things like that, right? That's the natural world. There is a whole other realm we live in called the realm of glory where God lives. Now listen to this. We are not natural people trying to have a spiritual experience. We are spiritual people wearing an earth suit that allows us to be ambassadors of the kingdom of God and the powers of the world to come, the mighty manifestations of the Spirit of God. Amen. So you are not a natural person trying to become spiritual. You are a spirit created a little lower than God, created in the likeness and image of God, an ambassador of the anointed Jesus and His anointing, sent on a mission to planet Earth to reap a harvest of souls and to live the good life which God beforehand prepared for us to live and ordained for us to live, right? That's what we're called to do. So we live in two... Thank you for joining us today for Times of Refreshing with Pastor James Fortune. We believe that this ministry will help you to rise up and walk in the authority and power available to every believer through the finished work of Christ. We would like to invite you and your family to Oasis Church. Oasis Church is located at this intersection of 2nd Street and Santa Fe Avenue in Edmond, Oklahoma. Oasis Church is a place where the freedom of the Holy Spirit and His gifts, exuberant worship, and powerful preaching and teaching of the Word of God flow freely. We have exciting ministries for your children from birth to 18 years old as well. If you would like to help support this ministry and send it to others who need the Word of God, you can send your offering to Oasis Church, 322 South Santa Fe Avenue, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73003. All gifts are tax deductible, and we believe that you will get a multiplied return on your gift both now and in the eternal kingdom of God.